Hello, my beautiful people. This is your host, Betty, and welcome back to my podcast. In this episode, you know, like I told you, I think a few weeks ago, I was going to talk to you about my, the surgeries I've gotten and the experiences that I've had up until, I would say, four years ago, I've never had a surgery in my life. I mean, I did have a baby, but it was not a surgery. It was a natural birth. The most they did was uh, put an, epi- an epidural in my back, but you know, I was I've never been under um, general anesthesia or anything like that. Uh, I did get my wisdom teeth taken out, but I think that was also in the last four years, maybe, and they did it with just the regular injections on the mouth, and they didn't even take them out. They only took three. <laughs> and I just kept feeling again and again and again the drill. So it was, you know, kind of something. Because I they had to keep injecting me and injecting me and injecting me on one side. Because it, it kept waking up. Like the anesthesia kept wearing off. Like the local anesthesia, right? And well, after that, you know, they gave me some um, painkillers and a bunch of ibuprofen. And I was like bleeding and stuff. I don't... It was... I was barely there. I mean, it was, you know, still anesthesia. It's not as bad as the general, but, you know, I still would like, oh, and then the pain and then, you know, everything. So I'm like, why didn't they take the four of them? Because what if the other one moves? <laughs> I don't want to go through that again. Nobody wants to go through anything again that they've ever been through. And it was not a good experience. But if you're me, life has a funny way of repeating cycles and showing you that things can be repeated and they can happen to you again and you will suffer again (laughs) not to be you know on the negative side here not at all it's just i was just thinking about a lot of things a lot of patterns in my life that just keep repeating themselves like it's like just happen like you know every so often I have to go through something really hard like shake me and and it sucks honestly it sucks well going back to surgeries so that was not a surgery right but it was kind of like a major ish procedure procedure so my first surgery was um, the laser eye surgery LASIK so that one, I actually got it done in 2021, um, you know, when COVID was still kind of like a thing, and I went, and I actually got it done in Mexico, because my whole family has, you know, has gotten it done over there, my friends and everything, nobody has ever had any issues, and it's obviously way, way, way cheaper over there, and I actually, for me, it was even cheaper, because I got like a super special, where both my eyes are, were going to cost the same as just one eye at that time. It was kind of like a like a Christmas special or something. I don't know. Some kind of special. I don't even remember what it was. Um, but yeah, so I got that done. It's Like I said, it's way cheaper than here. In the U.S., you are looking at probably like starting at $1,000 an eye. And over there, I... I think I paid $500 for both my eyes. Maybe a thousand. I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly, but I know that it was like super, like just cheap. I don't know if it was 500 per eye or 500 total. I don't remember. And not because it was cheap and because it was Mexico means it was bad. But I did have a bad experience. Like I said, all my family and friends have had surgeries over there, the LASIK, and everybody's has been fine, you know. It's not such a major procedure, it's just like the machine does it. But again, you know, my luck, my luck. So I was the first one scheduled that morning. And so, you know, they put the drops and everything, the ones that numb up your eyes. You can't see, obviously, because you're, well, you're not wearing your glasses. And at this point, you have to be uh, out of wearing contacts for like two, three weeks, maybe a month. And so that your eyes can go back to their shape and everything and everything is fine so I was there and I just 
all I could see was just lay shadows. And then I was put under the table and they started on my left eye. So for this, sorry for the graphic um, description here, but they grabbed this, you know, kind of like a, like an eyelash curler. No, let's say they're like, um, you know, like kitchen thongs maybe. And they put them so that they keep your eye open. And I think they put something in your eye, like a thing so that the eye doesn't try to close. Well, I think those things keep it open. Um, I, you know, it's been a few years, so I don't remember that, that, that exactly. But so they put it in and they're going to start the surgery, right? And it kind of like started. So they have to like, with the laser, they, you know, they flap, they do a flap for the, um, where is it, the retina or Yes, I think the red. Oh my god, I don't even remember the parts right now. So I know that they open a flap of a layer of your eye, and then they do the laser underneath it, and then they close it again, and then after that, your body is supposed to heal itself. They just give you a contact lens to help it, kind of like seal itself. Well, um, under the table, just there with my eye open, and then suddenly it stops. And then I hear the doctor, they start calling on the phone, someone else, the machine, it stopped. And the machine lost its calibration in the middle of my surgery. So they had to call the technician to get the calibration again. So my eye was open like that forever, ever. Like, I would say maybe, you know, this surgery total, it's supposed to last 10, maybe 20 minutes. My one eye was open like that for like 20 minutes. So that, whatever, created a lot of inflammation in my eye. And, you know, if you've ever heard people experiencing LASIK surgery, they tell you that as soon as you get, get done, you know, first day is kind of like you know you just sleep it off you just keep your eyes closed you just keep your thingies and then like the next day or a couple days later you're looking you can see fine everything just looks normal well not for me because obviously I had that luck so they finished my left eye they did my right you know the right was just fine and then so I had to go back I think two days later well that day I went uh, back to my hotel because I was staying in a hotel in, in Mexico and I was getting my, my eye drops. I had to like use like, I don't know if it was, I think it was antibiotics and something for the inflammation of the eye and then some other stuff and I had to keep like this shield in my eyes and all that stuff. And you know, it, it, it was kind of like, I don't know if it was painful. I don't remember if it was painful because they gave me drops. But I do know that I was like, uh, you know, like, my eye look horrible. <laughs> well, not that I look horrible, but my eye, it was like red. And you can see like there was a bubble inside. And it was just not looking good. My left eye was just not looking good. So I went to my appointment, I think the next day. I think the surgery was done on a Friday. And then on Saturday, you have to go back or either... It's that or either a Thursday and then you have to go back Friday. One of those. So I did that and I went back the next day and the doctor, you know, I I couldn't really see. So they put on those contact lenses to help me heal so that, you know, the flap would not separate or anything. And then they told me to keep using the drops. And then I had to go back like in a week or two or something to make sure everything was fine. At this point, I was, you know, like kind of getting worried because people usually have a f much faster recovery when they get that done and the doctor that I went to he had amazing reviews he had like he, all his patients have been great and everything I had he had good references but the fact that the machine lost its calibration in the middle of my surgery is just like that's just my luck I'm like how why 
what did I ever do in this world <laughs> for all this to happen to me? <laughs> oh my god, I know. It sounds so dramatic, but if you only knew half my life, you understand. But, so yeah, that's what happened. And then my, you know, my eye was, I went back and I think after like, I mean, I couldn't drive very well. I could see, but as soon as it was nighttime, I couldn't see anything. Like nothing. I couldn't drive at night because it was like, like all I see was halos and I had double vision looking at the stop signs, at the red lights, at everything. It was just like double. I was looking at the signs and everything was kind of like double vision or looking like a shadow or like a halo or like a star, like a glare. So many things that we were going on. You have no idea how many things I Googled to try to find what is it that I'm seeing to try to explain to people what is it that I'm seeing because I just couldn't see very well with that eye and obviously if one of your eyes doesn't work the other one cannot take the whole responsibility they have to work together right that's why they measure you know both eyes how would they be able to see together that's like when they give you glasses usually they put glasses on both of your eyes because they're supposed to give you an image together so that was just uh, that was so much and for some time I, I didn't even tell people that I sometimes when I was driving I couldn't see very well I could see but it was just not perfect it wasn't unsafe either I just I just didn't want to tell people that once again <laughs> I got something done and it didn't work oh my god so yeah, I, it took me probably around six months to finally be able to have like a good enough vision where, you know, like I could read the TV from the kitchen or I, I could see things. Now it's, my vision is not exactly perfect either, but I can see. You know, like I don't need glasses anymore. I can see everything around me. I do not see any any shadows, any double vision. Sometimes I do see some halos and some glares, but that's like I said when it's coming down tonight. Actually, when it's getting to sunset, at that time when it's dark enough for the lights on the cars to turn on, but it's not really dark outside, so that light like. It kind of like tricks my eyes and I don't see very well ahead. So it's, it's kind of tricky. But during the day, I can see just fine. I can drive just fine. You know, I, everything is fine. Um, just like now, it's been about three years. So, you know, when I try to look far away, they, the doctor said at some point I had like 20, 40 vision. Not, not true because that's not it. Right now, I'm looking at the TV, which is probably about, let's see, how many me's can I fit? One, two, three, four. So maybe I am like 20, 25 feet away from my TV, and there's a clock there, and I can see the clock says four, one, I don't know if it's an eight or a nine. So if I squint, Kinda, it doesn't work. Yeah, if I squint a little, kinda can see. But the clock that I'm telling you, the little numbers are about one inch big. And then I can see the TV, you know, it says right now, you know how Netflix plays and it says goofy comedy and uh, heist. So I'm having a little bit of like trouble seeing like the smaller letters at the bottom of the screen because it's far away. But if I get closer, a little bit closer, then I can see just fine. So, you know, ah, things here and there. So maybe at this point, and you know, as we get older, obviously our vision is going to get bad and we always need to get a uh, corrective surgery again, you know, like 10 years later from, it's probably going to be fat before, before it gets worse. 
um, because I just don't want to get to a point where I have to wear glasses again. I do sometimes wear glasses for like reading or if I'm on the computer too long or stuff like that because sometimes I have a, a hard time. Like I would just, I, all I do is squint <laughs> and I shouldn't be forcing my brain and my eyes to do that. So that's my story for my first <laughs> surgery. Oh my God. Yeah, no. And so, um, yeah, I was traumatized from that. Not enough to not have more surgeries, right? No. So my next surgery was uh, more of a... Uh, it, it's not like something you need to get done, but something you kind of have to get done when they're trying to find if you have any stomach issues. So I have GERD. I have the um, gastro something disease. So they had to do an endoscopy. And during the endoscopy, what they were looking for is to see if I had any ulcers that were affecting me having so much reflux or heartburn or, you know, like that feeling of the, the food coming back or the acid in my mouth or the burping all the time, all that stuff. They wanted to see if there was something wrong in my stomach. So they put a tube down my stomach. That one was the first time that I got general anesthesia. Wait, did I? I don't know. Actually not, because they had a tube on my... I had a thing in my throat because they had to put the camera down my throat. So I think it was more like a, like a, um, an IV anesthesia. I don't know. They gave me something. I remember they say, you know, when they tell you to count. And then I said, one. Or they told me to tell them something. I don't know. I, was, I remember I was talking. And then by like three... I was, I said, and I remember this very clearly, I said out loud, oh my God, because I could feel drifting away into the anesthesia. I literally, like, I remember, you know, I had a, th a piece in my mouth because I had to keep it open to put the tube inside to look at my stomach. And then they gave me, you know, the anesthesia and I was saying something and it was like, I could just remember everything going dark. Like, you know, like when you see it on the movies or like on the cartoons where the kids close their eyes and it just goes like dark. <laughs> That's how I look. That is exactly how it looked for me. It was so weird, but it was like, it just felt good. Like I was just drifting away and whatever. So they checked my stomach. No ulcers were found. Um... The lining of my stomach was fine. So, um, you know, my treatment is just to continue taking the medication for the reflux daily um, because, you know, it's just something genetic, something that I have to live with and blah, blah, blah. And I don't know if it was something more like uh, in the esophagus or something. I, at this point, I don't even remember. It was not a hurt. Oh, it was a... Hi, 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 hernia, is it, was it, maybe I'm confusing it with something else, I don't know why I have that, but it's kind of like, well, I think, I think they were looking for that, more like, it's something that it's like, kind of, and then your esophagus, is, and then it just prevents you from like, you know, like digesting, like the esophagus, you know, to the stomach, so, there was that. And everything was fine. I woke up. I, you know, I woke up and I was already like sitting on the wheelchair, um, waiting for them to wheel, wheel me outside. And then I was like, I had no idea what was happening. I was just like, cool. And actually, you know, when I had my endoscopy the, next, the day after that, and I asked if it was okay, since it was like a minor, you know, procedure, um, the day after that, I took a plane and I went to Las Vegas. I was fine. Nothing. You know, there was nothing. They didn't cut anything. They didn't open anything. They, it was just just a checkup and everything was fine. So the doctor said it was okay for me to fly the next day. Um, that day they did give me, you know, some pain medication. So I found out that, you know, whatever they gave me, which actually was fentanyl, obviously doctor prescribed and my IV based on my weight and everything. 
I didn't feel any pain that day. I remember no pain. You know how I knew I had no pain? Because the next day I woke up and I had back pain and I had this pain and I had all my body aches came back. And I'm like, oh my God, is this how I feel every day in pain? Like I just, I don't even know that I'm in pain anymore. (laughs) This is crazy. So that is, you know, how I knew that I was not in pain the day before because I really didn't feel anything. Everything just felt great. But you know, anesthesia and stuff. You always get the loonies. Um, So then my next one um, was uh, no surgery, not an elective one. Um, Well, I mean, I did choose to have it, but it was something medically necessary. I had a deviated septum, which I didn't know because my nose was not crooked. So I guess... The septum was deviated from the inside. So at some point in my life, my septum deviated from the inside and it was never shown outside like it usually is for a lot of people that, you know, you know, that they've broken their nose. Um, Besides that, they, I also had a turvinectomy. So this is called the septoplasty and a turvinectomy. The septoplasty is the deviated septum surgery and the turvinectomy is a reduction of the turbines, which are like little balloons or little you know balls that float in your nose they're supposed to trap like dirt and hair and anything bad going in your nose it kind of like traps it so it doesn't go down your lungs down your mouth and your throat so one of them was too big on one side and that's why i wasn't able to breathe that well i didn't have like breathing problems like people need a machine and night or anything i didn't have sleep apnea i did not and that was um proven during my sleep study that i did not have sleep apnea but i did have a lot of trouble with like i would wake up with my mouth would feel very very dry my throat was very dry and you know i live in the desert so obviously you know it's very dry here but it is not normal to wake up feeling there is very dry. You can feel a little bit of dryness, but every day it's crazy. So I got to a point where I was using a humidifier that was running all night on max power. I got an air purifier, which I still use both of them because those are recommended by the allergy doctor so that my sinuses and my mouth and my throat is not as dry. And then the air, obviously it's cleaner for me since you know i have a lot of allergies now who would have said who would have known all this right like all these things are so related and the nose thing um you know since there was like a lot of stuff in the back of my nose there was a lot of what do they call um dripping or oh my god i forgot the the term they use but it's when like a lot of your mucus just drips down your throat So that can also affect me having reflux. So everything, like I said, everything was connected. It just feels like everything is just one thing. And it's just like a bunch of things that at some point you connect. But if you had to look at it as just one thing, you wouldn't be able to find it. That's why they look at little things. So um, they cut that turbine. They made it smaller. And after the surgery, you know, I had to wear, use a lot of sprays. I still use sprays for allergies and for um, an steroid spray. But after the surgery, I was bleeding out of my nose so much, so much. I had, um, you know, I had to use it myself where for the whole process every day, I was bleeding, you know, obviously giving warning, trigger warnings about all the blood that was gonna be in the video and everything. And then I had to use a lot of saline, like saline sprays, kind of like, because I wasn't able to like poke my nose, pick my nose, blow my nose, nothing, because that could affect um, the surgery. That could um, open up my stitches and all that stuff. So I had to like literally just use a a nose spray, uh, saline. And I did go to the doctor a few times. Um, I think it was a couple. The first time that I went after my surgery, I think it was like a week or two after. I'm not, I don't remember very well. 
But when I was there, the doctor, you know, he used spray to numb up, numb my nose, and then he used like some little tweezer thingies to pull out like all the scar tissue that was left there, you know, after the surgery and with the blood and everything. And it was like so much. I you literally would see like huge pieces of chunks just coming out of my nose because it was all that scar tissue. And you know, it sounds bad. It wasn't that bad, honestly. I think I I think out of all the ones that I've had, I think the worst has been the laser one. But that's only because it really impaired my ability to see. You know, my ability to smell, oh, that's another thing. I can smell things and I I still can. But back then it was like kind of weird to me because I couldn't smell really well. And I am used to like smelling everything, which is bad. I have kind of like a you know, like a dog sense of smell where I can smell like things people cannot smell, I can smell them. And it sucks. It truly sucks. <laughs> but, you know, everything are better. Um, my nose, you know, I still use my sprays and now I'm going to the allergy doctor. I had another appointment with the nose doctor and he checked, you know, everything looked good and I didn't need to come back. He said, obviously, this is not permanent. Like, my turbines could grow again because they they can, you know, because they're obviously they grow through inflammation and other stuff. So it could happen. But that's why if I use my sprays regularly and, you know, my allergy pills as well, that would avoid a lot of that stuff. So my steroid and avoiding having allergies and stuff in my nose and my throat, that also helps. And that is why I still sometimes when I go to places like stores and stuff, I still wear a mask. I know, right? I mean, I get used to wearing a mask. That way I don't even have to do my makeup. <laughs> Just keep my glasses on and my mask and I'm good. But yeah, I usually do that to prevent anything going in my airways. Um, you know, anything down my nose or my throat and with the allergies in the nose and everything. It's just, it's just easier to avoid having that kind of like air contact with things like that so you know to me it's not nothing like oh you know I don't wear it every place but you know places um you know usually I there's places where you know that it could be more of that stuff you know if there's a lot of kids around or a lot of dust or a lot of this and that I just put it on or I even I just like put it over my mouth and my nose if it's just like something fast but you know after all these experiences those have been my only surgeries that I've had and I know they sound like they weren't even that big but oh my god the experiences that I had (laughs) oh I know crazy right so yeah I I really enjoyed telling you guys my stories I I really didn't even think it was gonna take this long to tell you this Because I was like, well, it's three surgeries, you know, your eyes, your nose, your stomach, what? Boom, 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 done. But no, I guess I was able to give you a little bit more description. And if I didn't name the things right, I'm sorry. (laughs) I did what I could. But I hope you guys have been enjoying this. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this, listening to me and my experiences. And I'll see you guys in the next one. And that's it. Stay, follow, subscribe. Love you.